Anthropic, which is, of course, the big chat GPT competitor that generates, you know, it's an LLM, generates text. They've got the cloud model. They have been accused of some copyright infringement issues. And so they have recently started to respond to these. There's a bunch of accusations. There's a new court filing. There's all sorts of drama around this that we're going to dive into today on the podcast and break down exactly what's happening and why I think this is going to be important for what happens in AI in the future. Now, today's episode is sponsored by my very own AI app builder and marketplace, AI Box. We have a crowdfunding campaign with less than 30 days left in it. So far, we've raised $300,000. If you're interested in investing in the project, you can go to republic.com slash AI dash box. I'll leave a link in the show notes. And if you're interested in using this to build your own AI tools and monetize them, you can get on the wait list at AIbox.ai. Let's get on to the show. We gon' bring it to you just like that. Welcome everyone to the future. It's AI Chat, bringing you the interviews and giving you info to be in the know. Tech company CEOs of Rock with us. Bet you gon' come back. I'm just saying the facts. This is AI Chat. Let's go. A whole bunch of music publishers, including Concord, Universal, and ABK Co., have all sued Anthropic over their chatbot Claude. You know, it's like the ChatGPT competitor. Um, for copyright infringement. So the lawsuit, which was filed in Tennessee, um, alleges that Anthropic unlawfully scraped song lyrics to train its AI, which then reproduces copyrighted lyrics. This is kind of interesting, right? Because you think of even ChatGPT, it's trained off of like all of the content on the whole internet. And of course, there's tons of song lyrics on here. And one other thing that I'll say that's interesting about this, I'm curious... um, I'm curious how this will go because this isn't something that's completely new. Um, I remember when Google similarly got sued by music publishers for essentially, I think they, they scraped, um, and actually it might not have been music publishers. It might've been websites that like wrote down song lyrics, but in any case, um, they were sued because they would scrape it. And when you search for like the lyrics to a specific song, Google would just display that. And they were not licensing that from any particular website. They were just, uh, displaying it. And in Google's case, they actually got caught because what the what the website started to do was like it, intentionally on some very popular songs, they would change a couple words uh, to be wrong, or they would add like white text on their webpage that you wouldn't see, but uh, the white text would appear on like the Google result, which would be like this web, this these lyrics come from this website. And it was very blatantly obvious. And I can't remember what the deal was, but Google ended up having to obviously go and license those lyrics. So Lyrics and licensing is a real thing, and it seems that now Anthropic is getting caught up in kind of the same uh, issue here. So Anthropic responded to a motion for preliminary injunctions to essentially stop making Claude AI model available, right? So when they sued them, they're like, hey, you have to shut down the entire Claude uh, chatbot because of this issue. And I don't think Anthropic really wants to do that. Obviously, they're spending millions, billions of dollars on this company. Um, So the company argued that using lyrics to train Claude is transformative and adds a new purpose or character. And when talking exactly about what that purpose is, Anthropic Research Director Jared Kaplan said that essentially the purpose is to create a data set to teach a neural network how human language works. So Anthropic claims its use of lyrics has no substantial you know, negative impacts on the market for copyrighted works, which I kind of honestly agree with. Um, But, you know, regardless of my opinion, song lyrics are a very tiny fraction of the trading data and licensing on those um, and on that scale, I think is a lot of people are arguing is infeasible. So so something really similar to what we're seeing with the New York Times lawsuit is that Anthropic um, is essentially saying that the the plaintiff or the people that are suing them and the way that they uh, essentially prompt Claude is what caused it to create this infringing content Um, and it's kind of similar to what we saw with the New York Times where essentially the New York Times is complaining and saying that OpenAI when they sued OpenAI recently they were saying like hey OpenAI literally quotes the New York Times Um, and it was like because of the way that they were feeding it information sometimes giving it a quote and saying that to spit it back and then it said it spit it back and then they said you you know whatever so there's just like a lot of shady stuff in these lawsuits I find a lot of times Um, And it's like how people use the AI model and they're complaining about what it spits out. So in any case, um, 
Anthropic has since implemented safeguards in Claude to prevent displaying copyrighted song lyrics, so I don't think this will be a, a problem in the future. And again, a reason why, you know, like they're literally suing and saying they need to shut down Anthropic and, and Claude entirely, which is ridiculous. They just put these safeguards in place. Shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, and then Anthropic, of course, is arguing um, that the music publisher's request is going overboard, converting millions, um, you know, covering millions of works. And so the company is essentially claiming that the lawsuit is filed in the wrong jurisdiction with no business ties to Tennessee. So I thought that was kind of an interesting. And I think the reason is because the music industry is based out of Tennessee. So they want to file it there. Um, they probably have better odds of it being successful. And I'm assuming Anthropic is, if it's American, it would be based out of Delaware, which uh, a lot of people think have better laws for startups and stuff. So right now, Anthropics, um, all of their operations are based in California. So it's argue it argues um, that, you know, all disputes should be litigated there. But the thing is, like, California is typically in a case like this is not going to side with the music industry. They're going to side with um, Anthropic because this is a startup and they understand what's going on here. So the generative AI industry's copyright battle, I think, right now, it's getting a lot stronger. Um, there's the New York Times, there's, uh, you know, Anthropic being sued. There's a lot of, there's a lot going on. So there is a nonprofit called Fairly Trained and essentially advocates for a licensed model certificate or certification for AI training data. Um, so platforms and companies right now are essentially giving legal defense for AI generated content users, um, and essentially to protect against these kind of issues. So the users don't have to worry about them. And of course, if there's a lot of regulatory concerns right now over the scope of data mining and fair use in AI. This is something that's being litigated, though, on a lot of fronts. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think right now the outcome of Anthropic's legal battle and the impact it's going to have on generative AI's industry and their legal landscape, it's unclear, but it's definitely going to be very interesting because, um, I mean, as with the case with the New York Times, a lot of these cases are we're, we're playing out in real time. And the way that they are settled is going to have a big impact on what these AI models are able to do in the future. So it's definitely something I will keep you updated on as it continues to progress. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app, or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.